Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making grass. In last week's video I talked about how you can create grass objects in your Game Maker game that will wave back and forth over time like this as if they're swaying in the breeze. And ever since I've recorded this video, grass has been bouncing around my brain pretty much non-stop and there's a couple other things I'd like to do here. First and foremost, I thought it might be fun to take this a step farther and make this grass react to the player as they walk past. Uh, this is something else we do in Wizard X. It's, um, it's another thing that can make your game world feel more alive. One thing that we will not talk about in this video is shaders. And I know that kind of became a joke in the comments in the last video when I said we're not going to talk about shaders and then everyone wanted to talk about shaders. It is possible to transfer most of this over to a shader so that you don't have to directly deal with like sprite offsets and stuff yourself. It is a significant amount of work. There's a lot of additional setup that you have to do to make it work. Doing this in a shader is not inherently better. Moving the code that handles the wave to a shader absolutely will have removed some of the flexibility that is available to you by doing it in normal GML. And last but not least, if you're not careful about how you do this in a shader, you can find that it will make performance worse instead of better. So firstly, um, I have gone and copied this, uh, this waving grass code into my, uh, my usual 2D test project. And we're not instantiating any yet. For those who don't know what this looks like, this is a very prototypical top-down sort of uh, video game here where we can walk around and talk to NPCs and that sort of thing. Uh, this is not a huge room, but if I were to go into the room uh, and go into the creation code, I'm going to go and instantiate a thousand grass objects at random positions in the room. Uh, this is going to be kind of a lot doing it in code because I don't feel like placing them all by hand. And if I run the game with the grass objects instantiated, they look like this. So pretty dense, uh, pretty dense meadow of grass here. We are doing some automatic depth sorting uh, because I um, I set up this project to, uh, to, to use that. And... Uh, when we walk around, we can see that the uh, the grass is waving back and forth. Uh, it's also got that little stripe of wind where, like, grasses in different sections of the room are waving at different rates because of this little, uh, this little position hash here. So that's what we're going to start with. So if we want to have the player cause this grass to sway back and forth by walking into it, what values might we want to change to make that happen? So this time offset variable here, this is what drives the wave. This is what drives the like the swaying back and forth because it's a it's a value that's added to the, um, the x coordinate of the top of the sprite, but not the bottom. And right now this expression is just going to be a little fancy cosine wave. But the fun thing about this is that we can just kind of tack on whatever we want onto the end of this. If we were to say time offset equals this cosine wave plus like I don't know twenty five or something like that and run the game, uh, we can see that the grass is all now leaning some amount to the right because we're adding 25 pixels to the uh, to the top of the sprite and that's causing it to lean. And we could, um, maybe if you don't want all the grass to be automatically leaning to the side, we could, instead of hard coding this to 25, we could make a uh, an instance variable that's gonna be something like player offset, let's say. We can initialize player offset to 25 and uh, this is not where this code is going to live by the end of the video. If I were to go into the uh, the end step event and then we can inherit the end step event, this is what does the depth sorting. And we could say if keyboard check pressed something like vk space player offset equals 25. And then we can have player offset minus equals like 1 or something every step. And then, uh, just to make sure that this never goes below, like, zero, we can say if player offset is less than zero, player offset equals zero. Uh, you could also use a min function if you like, instead of checking if it's less than zero. And then if we go back to the step event, I mean, if we go back to the draw event, uh, instead of saying time offset equals that plus 25, we can say time offset equals that plus player offset. And now, when I run the game, if I hit the space bar, the grass is going to all jump over to the right at the same time, and then it's going to uh, it's going to slide back into position. So that is a uh, that's a beginning. We can start with that. Uh, the next thing we might want to do is instead of having this all happen at once when the player hits the space bar and have every piece of grass jump to the side at the same time, uh, we could instead replace this condition that will make this happen with something like if place meeting um x y obj underscore player and you can use place meeting for this you can use any of the other like dozen or so collision functions that are built into game maker for this uh we can say if place meeting x y obj underscore player then we're going to set our player offset like this 
And you can probably guess what this is going to do. So this is going to cause uh, the grass to jump to the side when um, when the player is in contact with it. And that's sort of heading in the right direction of, of where we'd like this to be. Uh, there's still a few very obvious problems with this, such as, uh, for example, when the player touches the grass, it's like it's going to stay leaning to the side, even if you're not moving. So we could also uh, make use of... Uh, some logic to see if the player has actually moved this step and to only have this fire off if the player has moved. Game Maker provides some built-in variables that are uh, fairly convenient for that. So we can say something like if obj player dot x is not equal to obj player dot x previous or obj player dot y is not equal to obj player dot y previous. And that's going to check if the player has moved since the last step before uh, shoving the grass off to the side. So when you do this, uh, mind your order of operations. Maybe not in like the PEMDAS sense or the dead mass if you're uh, from the UK, but uh, make sure that you run this code after the player's position has been updated in, this, in like the current step. Uh, so in my example here, in my sample project, the player's position is updated during the regular step event, during the main step event. And that is why you would want the um, any logic like this to happen in the end step so that it happens after the player's position has been updated because if this runs before the player's position has been updated then x and x previous and y and y previous will always be the same and this will never happen. Um, if I walk around now we can see that if I stop moving uh, the grass will stop getting shunted off to the side and uh, the, the grass that's around me will, will just fall back into position and it'll start moving again when I walk around and that is more or less uh, what we uh, what we had in mind uh, when we started this exercise, but it's still a little bit stiff and awkward. It is still just a linear transition from like fully offset to to no offset, and that's maybe uh, it doesn't look that great. It looks better than what we had before, but it still doesn't look that great. What we really want, I think, is something that looks more like another sine or cosine wave to make the grass bounce back and forth a little bit before settling back into position. And there's a whole bunch of mathematical expressions that you can use to achieve this. I have decided that we're going to be going with something that's just a, um, it's going to be a sine wave. And it's just going to decay back to zero over the course of a couple of seconds. So in order for this to not look kind of weird, we're going to need a couple different values here. I'm just going to start off by messing with player offset in a different way than we were before. So we can leave player offset initialized to zero in the create event. If we go over to the step event, um, let me, really? So I don't know, so I've never bothered to actually figure out what Windows is, is doing here with like, I think this is like the iPod driver from iTunes or something like that. I don't know why this keeps popping up randomly on my computer. I should probably figure it out if I wasn't so lazy, but anyway. I think a sway value of 25 was a little bit much, so let's, let's knock that down to like 16 or so. That should be a little bit more tame. And uh, we are going to have this uh, decay down to zero over time. Go over to the draw event, and what do we do when we want to have a value oscillate back and forth? We can use a sine or cosine wave. I'm actually going to use a sine wave for this, I think. Um, I don't know if it'll really make that much of a uh, difference if I use sine or cosine right immediately now, but for how we're going to uh, craft this later in the video, it will matter a little more. Anyway, if we say player offset times the sine of uh, the time value, so if I run this now, uh, this probably won't look too different. We're not really going to have a lot of bouncing back and forth behavior. You can see a little bit of bounce back and forth when it uh, when it resets its position, but um, we're actually going to want to multiply the time value by something much bigger. Let's go with times eight, so that the uh, the wave has a little bit more time to oscillate back and forth. the uh, The wave is essentially going to be accelerated, and uh, this player offset value is only going to last for like a quarter of a second before it decays to zero. And now if I run through the grass, we can see that when I do this, it's um, it's now waving back and forth a little bit more. So this still looks a little bit stiff in a way that probably most people aren't going to be super into. Um, and the reason, well, one of the reasons for that is because we are using the same time value that the, like, the base wave is being driven by um, when we do this. And we really want, when the sway starts, we really want the wave to start over from basically like a, a fresh cycle. And the way that we can do that, or at least one of the ways we can do that, because there are quite a few ways that you can push these numbers around to, to achieve a similar effect, but this is the way that I think is the most straightforward, as we can define another 
variable in the player's create event that's something like player offset time. And I'll just initialize that to zero. And this is going to be a little timestamp that is going to be set when the, uh, the player runs into some grass and activates the whole thing. And we can do that, we can use basically the same time stamping system as we, as we used here. Uh, time equals current time divided by a thousand. That's going to be the number of seconds since the game has started. Um, if you care about things like delta time or like otherwise some kind of time step that's controlled by, uh, by other things in the game, you can, you can use other logic for this. But player offset time equals current time divided by a thousand. And now, uh, this is going to allow us to figure out how long exactly the sway has been running for. If we subtract uh, the time value, that's uh, whatever the whatever the current time is. If we subtract the player offset time from that, this is going to give us the amount of time in seconds since the wave has started. So if you don't see what's going on here, uh, just reason through it. So if the current time is like 10, and the player offset time is like eight, so say the um, like the player charged into the grass at eight seconds into the game, and it's now ten seconds into the game. Ten minus eight is two, so the amount of time since that since that grass effect was triggered would be two. This is a pretty common timing mechanism that you'll run into in a lot of places in games. If you've never seen it before, you should probably um, probably make friends with it. It comes up a lot. And uh, after that, we just have our time value, our elapsed time, and we just multiply that by 8 to, like, accelerate the wave a little bit. And now if I run the game, if I start charging through the grass, it still looks a little bit stiff, and there's some stuff we can do about that later. There's some other stuff we'll, we'll be doing to make it look a little less stiff later. But now if you run through the grass, we'll have, um, you'll be able to see it, like, move to the side, because the sine wave is going to start at t equals 0, uh, the sine function is going to return zero, and it's going to increase over the curve and then back the other way uh, over time. And that's the reason I'm using a sine function and not a cosine function here, because uh, the cosine function will will start at t equals zero at a value of one, where the sine function will start at t zero at a value of, of zero. What else do I want to do? So to make this a little bit smoother, we can, again, uh, tweak some of these values. So if I want to, uh, maybe we'll make the... Um, the wave decay a little bit slower. I feel like that would help a lot. So we can say in the step event player offset minus equals 0.5 or something like that. And that will, uh, that's, that's better, but it's still a little sudden. It still comes to a halt a little bit suddenly. Uh, we can say maybe minus 0.1 and that'll, uh, that'll make the effect last a lot longer. And we'll get a lot more of a bounce back and forth when we, uh, when we run into the grass because uh, the amplitude of the wave is going to fall off slower, and it will uh, it'll take more time for it to settle back to zero. So all in all, this is now pretty similar to what we're doing in Wizard X for the wave, but there is a little bit more. Uh, one, you might have noticed when we um, when we were charging through the grass, if you're running in like if you're running to the left, uh, when you touch the grass, the the grass is still going to start waving to the right, or in other words, like towards the direction where you came from, and that doesn't like make a ton of sense. It makes more sense when you're running to the right and the grass is, when you touch the grass, it starts waving to the right. Uh, when you go uh, up or down, it also starts waving to the right. And that's because of, uh, again, the sine wave. So it's going to ascend uh, the sine function. You know what? Uh, let me go and, uh, and actually bring up Desmos. So if you have like f of x equals sine of x, something like that. Uh, the sine function is going to start at start at zero, and it's going to ascend in the positive direction over time. It's going to peak at one, it's going to drop back to zero, and then uh, towards the negative one. And uh, the positive x direction is uh, is to the right, meaning that when we do this, the grass is always going to sway to the right. Um, if we don't want the grass to always sway to the right, uh, we could add a little bit more logic to uh, how this is calculated. So let me go to find a third variable. We're not actually using this random offset here, are we? Let me go to find a third variable, and that's going to be player offset direction. We can initialize that to zero, and in end step, when the player touches the grass, we can set this to either positive one or negative one, depending on a couple different um, couple different criteria. One, uh, we can say we can simply say if x is less than obj player dot x. So if we are to the left of the player, uh, we're going to want uh, the grass to sway to the left, and if we're to the right of the player, we're going to want the grass to sway to the right. To accomplish this, uh, if we're to the left of the player, player 
offset direction. We can set that to negative one, and if we're to the right of the player, we can set that to positive one. And going back to the draw event, um, we can multiply this player offset direction by the rest of this expression. And that is going to cause, uh, in some situations, the sine wave to bounce in the direction that we were going. And in other situations, it will cause the sine wave to bounce in the opposite direction. And now if I run the game, uh, we have an effect where if I run up, uh, the grass that's on the, on the right side of us is going to sway to the right, and the grass that's on the left side of us is going to sway to the left. Definitely better than what we had before. Uh, it has not taken care of the problem where if we're running left or right, uh, the grass is going to kind of kind of do weird stuff. And if we want to take care of that, we can throw some additional conditions on this and say if uh, if we're moving horizontally, so if obj player dot x is not equal to obj player dot x previous. Actually, I should say if this is um, if this is less than x previous. Uh, not less than or equal to. So if we are, if the player is moving to the left, uh, we are going to want the player offset direction to be negative one. Um, else, if obj player dot x is, uh, oh, that's greater. That's not less than. That's less than. If obj player dot x is greater than obj player dot x previous, then we can set this to positive one because now we're moving to the right. We want the grass to shake to the right. Else. If the, if the player is not moving to the left or the right, if they're just moving up and down, um, then you can um, you can do the logic that's going to be based on uh, where the grass is relative to the player. So if the grass is to the player's left or the right. I'll, I'll leave some comments in here. Okay, so this is going to... Um, this is going to allow the, the grass to shake in the direction of the player depending on where we're going. Uh, it still does look a little bit stiff. In particular, it looks a little bit stiff when you start, like, when you start running and you change direction. And some of the pieces of grass, like, their sway direction suddenly changes very sharply. And there is one last condition that we can, uh, that we can check uh, to, uh, to clean that up a little bit. And that's going to be if player offset equals equals zero. So this is going to cause this sway these sway variables to only be set if the grass is not already shaking. If the grass is already shaking, then it's not going to like be suddenly reset. And that is arguably going to have the biggest impact on how smooth this looks. So like when I when I'm running like to the right and then I move like up, uh, suddenly the grass that would have been moving to the right, uh, that's um that would get pushed in, in another direction isn't going to be suddenly snapped to its new position because that does look a little bit weird. Uh, this probably makes the effect look more fluid than anything else we've done so far. Um, let's see. It does look, when the sway value is very small but not quite zero, you might, you could make the argument that like if player offset is like less than like one uh, would be sufficient. And if the, if the grass has like a small sway value, interrupting it and resetting it isn't the worst thing in the world. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna split hairs over this. You can um, you can have it run that logic however you want. Um, I am going to uh, jump over to, to GitHub desktop over here and make a commit. All right, that was fun. So this video is already getting a little bit long and I do want to spend a decent amount of time talking about how to optimize this and I don't want this video to end up running on for like 45 minutes. So I think I'm actually gonna save that for some other day. My name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of the video, which will contain all the code that I wrote this time. I do like to post videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker. So if anything like this appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, let me know if you've done anything especially fun with this. Uh, for example, adapting this code to make it work for NPCs or enemies in addition to just the player. You should all go check out Wizards of the Ducks and the Lost Hat, which is one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Pixelated Pope, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Game Art Indie, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Bokeh Dev for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.